Have you ever heard of polycystic kidney disease, or PKD? The Mayo Clinic defines it as an inherited disorder in which clusters of cysts develop primarily within your kidneys, causing your kidneys to enlarge and lose function over time. While that clinical definition is helpful, it can have a much more personal impact on people's lives. Our next guests have felt that impact. We're being joined by Bart Hallberg, who is living with PKD, and his daughter, Kyle Detterman, who also lives with the disease. They're here to share their story and tell us more about the impact of PKD and how you may be able to help those living with it. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you know, I imagine it is really, it's challenging to talk about sometimes when something is causing you to need help, right? And um, it's necessary though. And so I really appreciate you being willing to share the story. Let's start a little bit um, with you, Kyle, and, and tell me why it's important to you to really talk about this and, and get some of this information out to get more help. Yeah, so I think it's important to start with the fact that a lot of people have some sort of chronic kidney disease. Um, I think that the National Kidney Foundation has said somewhere like 37 million people um, in the world have kidney disease, not necessarily what we have, which is polycystic kidney disease. Um, for us, it's not super symptomatic, and so uh, me being only 28, I don't have a ton of symptoms yet, but dad, does and so um, I just think it's important to know that you can be helpful uh, whether that's being a donor um, doing the kidney walk and just kind of being knowledgeable about it is really helpful because there's a lot of diseases out there where you don't show symptoms but it's still affecting you day to day um, which I think is important to know and I'm sure also challenging in that you, with something that's inherited, you see the future in many ways, which can be really, really hard. Yeah. Um, dad's mom had kidney disease, and then dad and I do, and I have two daughters, and so there is kind of a weird mortality-esque uh, feeling. But also, I mean, you can still live a normal life, and so knowing you know, symptoms and when to get diagnosed and if you get diagnosed and all of that is really helpful, especially with preventative care and just understanding it is, um, I think, key. Let's talk a little bit about where you are now and what you are experiencing on a regular basis. Well, you know, uh, what uh, my daughter just said here is uh, this is something that really is asymptomatic. I don't feel any different now than I did 20 years ago when I was diagnosed to begin with. And that diagnosis came about, again, because my grandmother uh, died from the disease. My mother had it at that time, and she thought I should go in and get checked. So that was 2003 when I found out. I would have never known anything was wrong. I still don't know anything is wrong, other than the fact that it's there. I don't feel any different. There's no pain. There's, there's no dysfunction in any kind of way. It's just there. And there is a, uh, I have a fabulous uh, nephrologist in Yankton where I live who keeps close tabs on me. There is kind of a magic number with respect to kidney functionality that he looks for. Once it gets to 15%, then we start talking about dialysis. Uh, both my grandmother and mother were on dialysis. Uh, I have no desire to go on that at all, mm -hmm. even though it is so much different now than it was before. It is so much better and so much easier. Uh, so I have actually have an appointment with him uh, next week. So we kind of see where we're going to go with that. How, are you getting closer to that number where you're starting uh, to have to wait I on had it? a um, uh, follow-up with my primary care physician the other day. She did a blood test, and the functionality was at 16. It had been around 19 for quite a while. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping, if uh, you know, hedging my bet that that was a fasting lab. <laughs> I'm hoping that the regular lab without fasting maybe raises that a couple so I don't have to worry about this dialysis, but it could be part of it. And if so, we'll just take it how it comes. And kidney transplants, an uh, answer to this as well, is one of the solutions. And it can be something that's hard, first of all, to, to do. Kidney is one of the organs you can get a living donor with. Yes. We, most, most of us have two, and we don't need two. Um, 
But it's also really expensive and really hard to find that perfect match, especially people go within their families often, and that's probably not a reasonable solution here. Right. So um, I'm an only child, and so is dad. Um, and so ideally, it would be someone that you're related to. Unfortunately, because we both have kidney disease, I cannot be a donor. Um, and so having people sign up to be a donor is obviously very helpful. Um, but then finding that exact match, um, and there's quite a lot that has to match for it to work. Um, yeah. Well, we have, uh, you know, there's basically two options for a kidney transplant. There's a living donor, which is the optimum way to go. And that's very simple from the fact that you have your donor here and you're here in the same room. It goes from this person to this person. It hasn't been out of the body very long and usually begins functionality quite quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I am also signed up for a deceased kidney. That's different uh, in many cases with a deceased kidney because it's been out of the body so long. It doesn't mean that it won't work, but once it's put in, you may have to do some dialysis to get that kidney to function, and it takes a little bit longer than a living donor would. We have a kidney walk coming up, which is one good way that people can really start to get engaged at least and provide some necessary funds and awareness because it's really expensive. I know you've even set a GoFundMe up account personally because of the expenses, but if you want to share a little bit about why it's important to participate in this kidney walk. Yeah, so like any walk to raise awareness, um, I think it's vital that people get out, show their community support, and also realize how many people within their community are affected. A lot of the time with lesser known diseases like polycystic kidney disease, people don't understand that their neighbors, their teachers, you know, their coworkers, um, there's a good chance that someone they know is dealing with it. Mm -hmm. So just having the awareness is huge. Um, any sort of um, participa participation and stuff like that, um, Sharing it on social media, social media is huge. Um, and then just raising funds is huge. Um, right. Donors and um, organ donors and getting the donation and everything that goes with it for the donor and the recipient is really expensive. There's a lot of hidden expenses too that aren't covered. So I appreciate you sharing your story. I know Absolutely. it can, you seem fine and then you're just not one day. So I appreciate you being here. Absolutely, thanks for having us. Thank you.